Hey everyone, welcome to the Ubisoft Forward post show. My name is Yusuf McGeed and this is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We're going to take a deep dive into about 30 minutes of gameplay and we're joined by a very special guest here. Hey everyone, uh, this is Philippe Bergeron, otherwise known as Fizz. I am the quest director on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So Fizz, we're setting up here for what looks like an epic encounter. Tell us exactly what's going on here. Yeah, so here we're midway through the uh, the quest that we're showing um, for you before. Here we're looking at the assault of Bird Castle. Um, so these are big moments that usually uh, sort of culminate at the end of the story. And so here Avar, our Viking raider, is taking a group of raiders and ferds into Bird Castle to go and take down Ruid uh, and his clan. So who exactly is Ruid and why does Eivor sort of want to pick a fight with him? Basically Ruid comes into play about halfway through this story arc where at the beginning of the arc, this is something that, that happens before, Ruid basically caused a lot of turmoil within the territory and Oswald, who's the sort of elderman to be to inherit this territory, needs your help to take him down. Oswald having just been defeated in a previous quest and so here this is revenge but also accomplishing your ultimate goal. So Fizz, as you're talking, we're seeing some of the combat of Valhalla. Can you tell us a little bit about the changes to combat this time around? We wanted to uh, basically add a lot of new mechanics to it. So we added like some dual wielding for the player, like a stun system in there. It, and we really needed to do this to sort of portray that sort of the brutality that comes with being a Viking in this day and age. So it sort of fits into that uh, the time uh, and the character. Oswald, he lives. Oswald lives! Eivor, is that you? Shut your ass, twig spine. Here, Eivor has taken her entire army through the assault, and finally it's revealed that our, our elderman, our ally, Oswald, is still alive, and Ruid has him captive. So this is what it comes to, Wolfkist? Two Danes fighting over a filthy Saxon whore, son? If this swine is your prize, come and get him. So now that we've seen that Oswald is alive, we have Ruid within our sights. Uh, what's the next step here? So the next move for Eivor is to finally uh, face off against Ruid. She has her allies. They can take care of the rest of the army. Now it's time to go one-on-one -on -one against Ruid in one of our boss battles, actually. Your battle is not yet won, Oswald. And it's worth pointing out, actually, that here what we're showing is the player um, going and facing off against Ruid aggressively, but you, we tend to always have a to support a 360-degree approach in these things. So the player could have approached us a little bit more stealthy and gotten at least like a good critical hit on either Ruid or his wolf, and so you can play this a little bit more strategically if that's your play style. So we're not only fighting Ruid here, but also his pet wolf, right? You're, one of the, my preferred strategies is to eliminate the wolf first, just focus fire on him. It takes at least one opponent out of the combat. Now, Ruid will have extra abilities that come into play if you do eliminate his wolf, um, but I think having one opponent less in the battlefield makes for a good strategy uh, in the hole. <sighs> Only the cold dark of Niflheim awaits you. Valhalla is my destiny. That thing will not be met today. Why does they should be ruled, Wolfkist? Made thralls, not treated as equals. We are better than this, than all of them. Do not drag me down to the sewage you wallow in. They just had Dane fight tooth and nail for a sanction. You throw in with these wastrels, these arrogant swine? Eivor, no! He should be tried before God, a lawful assembly. <laughs> All right, so we've defeated Ruid, we freed Oswald. What comes next? I won't have Oswald, in this case, prefers for Ruid to be kept alive. And so you basically have to choose, are you going to go against his witches or t stay true to your nature? 
So we have this choice to make, but before we get into that, I want to rewind a little bit because we just did this big, grand assault, but Eivor couldn't have done it alone. Uh, she clearly had to recruit some folks along the way, get some troops, get some allies. So let's actually rewind and see how we went about first gathering those troops. Right, so when coming up to an assault, it's a game of numbers. Eivor can go into pretty much any location and be uh, a stealthy Viking, eliminating some of the assets, which ultimately would be a strategy. You can do that, and you'll have some um, some of the ingredients or uh, of the assets there that will have been sabotaged, but you still need an army. So here what we're seeing is Eivor going around the countryside and raising what we call a third, which is the men and the women of the territory who come up and fight in the name of a king. So here Eivor is going around and try and convince people to fight in the name of Oswald to finally take down the oppressor that is Ruid. Defending East Anglia, defending you. Will you not do the same? What? Die in defense of the last cause? Yeah, so she, she's really using like the, the image and like the the leadership that Oswald had, what he meant to the people in his name. She's going to recruit these people. Pretty words, Dane. But the men of Theovard have their own battles to fight. So we're told by this Reeve that there are troops, there are allies that he could add to our cause, but first we sort of need to do him a favor, is that right? Yeah, so um, obviously these people have been run down by Ruid and the, the, the impact he's had on the territory, so I think a lot of these people have sort of lost hope. And so you need to show them that there is hope. And so here Eivor is basically helping them take back one of their, their prized locations um, by taking a couple men and raiding a nearby um, township basically taking it back for the people and showing that there's there's a reason to continue fighting and then get them on your side When Eivor does this, obviously you have access to a full suite of abilities. So again, the improvements that we've done to the fight system. Um, you have some brutal axe throwing in there. You have archery or like a range combat abilities in there as well. Um, so really, again, like depending on what your play style is, you can customize your loadout and go in there um, how you wish. <laughs> Fizz, we just saw this giant pulse go out. What exactly was that? So that is actually this is what we call the Odin sight. The Odin sight is basically our interpretation of the um, the eagle vision from previous games, and we thought it was good to sort of bring that back. It's basically Eivor's intuition. It's how she perceives the world. When player uses that, you can it'll highlight basically interactive objects like things that will bring her an advantage. So we'll have arrows, cons um, like health consumables that are in there. So it really is like a good way of sort of understanding the world and showing you like things that you can go and touch. Yeah, I mean, speaking of things we can touch, we just picked up this awesome new weapon. It's something we wanted to play with on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where we have fewer weapons in the game, but you can invest in them more so they become your weapon. And so depending what your preferred play style is or your preferred weapon type then you can go and choose I'm going to I'm going to fight with this weapon and invest heavily into that. Not only are we looting weapons but we see something here called the book of knowledge. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? They unlock skills for the players. So here you can see the Valkyrie dive that has just been unlocked. We have these spread out throughout the world so again to promote exploration and discovery. As you travel through the world and you explore locations, you can find these books that will add abilities that you can go and invest in, put into your loadout, then go into the different locations with the different uh, quests in the game and use those depending on what your playstyle is. Now we've recaptured this village, we've secured more troops for our assault. Let's jump back now and figure out what we want to do with Ruid. The rightful king of East Anglia has spared your life today, and so it will be. Compassion is a virtue suited for anyone, Eivor, including you. 
Thank you. Eivor decided to let him live. Ruid is really angry about that. Being a Norse Viking, being put to the death in battle is your road to Valhalla. So he was basically denied access to Valhalla in this situation. Obviously, all of these decisions come into play later on in the game, so we have very difficult decisions for the player to make. We didn't want to have easy uh, decisions. Yeah, you know, when I was playing, I, I decided to listen to Oswald and spare Ruid's life, but what exactly is the relationship like between Eivor and Oswald? So the relationship between Eivor and Oswald is is, is an alliance. It's uh, basically Eivor is surrounded by territories um, that initially getting into England are hostile towards her. And um, obviously, if you want to set up a new settlement, you want to have make sure that your neighbor is friendly. Um, so here in East Anglia, Oswald is the man for the job where putting him into a position of power would help her sort of secure her territory. Um, so earlier on to the territory, uh, Eivor comes in here, meets Oswald. The problems he had with Rued are sort of put to light, and going through the arc, you basically help him deal with Rued and and aligning basically Danes with Saxons in one uh, territory. So Fizz, we've completed the assault. We've gotten our hands dirty with some combat, taken down Rued. We have this big open region of East Anglia, so before we head off to Oswald's wedding, what do you say we head out, have some fun, and see what we can get into in the open world? That sounds great. So we see a cat here with a speech bubble above it, and you best believe if you let me talk to a cat, I'm gonna talk to a cat. Yeah, these, these are some of our... Um... Some of my favorite moments actually in the game where we put in put out a whole bunch of events throughout the territory um, And it sort of rewards again exploration going around It's a it's a sh chance for us also to sort of showcase a different side of Eivor A lot of the quests sort of deal worth more with like politics and warfare And this shows a slightly more human nature to her uh, so it permit us to explore that character a little bit more And so here, basically, like you're you're trying to help a kid with his cat, and ultimately get that cat to sort of join your crew uh, as a cat raider. You just said cat raider way too casually. You're telling me I could have a cat Viking raider on my longship? That's that's exactly what I'm telling you. Oh my god! Yes, I love it. Perfect. <laughs> So yeah, as, as you're riding around the, the, the rivers of England, you would see a cat basically walking around your longship, keeping your Viking raiders company. You know, speaking of the Viking longship, we're seeing some of that gameplay here now. Can you talk a little bit about how that works and functions in Valhalla? Yeah, so, so starting out on this project, um, I think the Viking longship is one of the, the biggest images that we all have when we think about Vikings in our game. And so Vikings had this, this awesome designed for a longship that had a very shallow hull, so it permitted them to go very far inland very quickly, and you could basically disembark uh, Viking raiders like on pretty much any shore. We added that into the game where you can basically s sail up to any location and then just decide to disembark with your guys and raid a location, loot all his treasure, get back in the ship, and then continue really, uh, sailing down the river um, to your next opportunity. So I know past Assassin's Creed games allowed for songs and things like that to be sung on ships. Will Valhalla have a similar version of that? Yeah, so this is something we, we actually wanted the the crew of your ship to become like your, your home away from home. So we added stories and songs into uh, the ship. So basically, as the player is going around, you could decide to have your skull sort of sing a song for you as you row down the river. But you can also decide, depending on who the raiders are in your ship, to hear more about their life. So you can actually queue up stories and they'll give you a little bit more background on who they are. So you get to know your your sort of fighters as you're traveling around the world, which is a cool um, moment. So here we're seeing a bit of a different view. What exactly are we looking at? We had this on, on previous assassins where you would like ride on, on your horse and you could pull out, have the, ro the, the horse sort of follow the track. We have a similar thing for the ship where you can put up your sails, it's cruise control for the ship, so you can pull back, take in the scenery, listen to some songs or some stories, and just take it all in.
So, you know, speaking of Viking songs, we have an activity here that's not exactly singing, but kind of related, right? Yeah, so here what we have is what we call flighting, which was an activity that Norse people would partake in. They would like to have a battle of wits and, and sort of poetry where insults would be thrown back and forth between each other. The idea was to try and have a good insult, um, but also to have a good rhythm and a good rhyme in there. So it, it's basically a precursor to rap battles. Here's the silver. Now begin. To all those whom I speak, they say Eivor's a clod. Then you're speaking to fools and their knowledge is flawed. Well... How exactly do you go about being successful in one of these? The, the trick behind a good flight was to choose the right insult, um, identifying the right cadence, and then trying to find what rhymed the best. I'm known for my might. Interesting. Interesting. Silent whispers all claim that you're terribly dense. Then you've clearly misheard them. My wit is immense. Oh, you looked out with that one. Well, what a surprise. Eivor of the Raven Clan is a true talent. I'm shocked. Don't believe everything you hear. Unless it touches on my flighting, then heed every word. Take the coin. So now that we've proven our sharp tongue and wit, uh, I think it's time for a bit more relaxing activity. So we're, we're fishing here. Yeah, that's it. Um, so... We gave Eivor a fishing line, so you can actually throw out a line and, and go catch some fish. Um, this is used basically to, uh, uh, to play into our new health loop where the player will lose health in, in the world and it doesn't automatically generate, regenerate like we would have in the past. So you actually have to go out and get some, some supplies. So you'll find mushrooms uh, and some food that you can gather. But here, like, we, you, you can also catch some fish and consume that to regain some health. If we also so, will sometimes have it in, in certain quests. So it's a good way to sort of chill out on the side of the, uh, of the water and just, again, take it all in. So this is what we call one of our offering altars. So the idea is that you, you find these around the world and you make offerings to it. So it'll take like animal parts and stuff that you can find throughout the world. Here, what you're seeing though, is sort of like a, a fancy version of it where as you do your offering, you get interrupted by some, some kids that basically come and steal your stuff. So it was just a way for us to sort of showcase that like the some systems concept. and the activities in the world can sort of play in with some, some quests and some little events. So it's our way to sort of dress up these moments and make it all fit inside the, the whole experience. Yeah, this seemed like a really sort of unexpected turn for what I thought was going to be is kind of a simple interaction. Yeah, and it's really what we were trying to do with these events is to is to give another dimension to Eivor, other than just, you know, the pure rar Viking or the politician. Because you can imagine at some point that will we'll grow old if you're always telling that, that, that version of the character. So it, it lets us really go into the depth of who is Eivor, uh, what motivates her, how she can interact with the world outside of uh, warfare and politics. And it also showcases like a, a different facet of the world at the same time. It's not only Eivor. So it, it just winds the breadth of the stories that we can tell. So who exactly are these two children? These are kids of East Anglia. They are going through tough times um, with whatever Rude has been doing to the territory. And so they're just here trying to survive and, and basically exploit the people that are there to make offerings. It was kind of nice to see that Eivor wasn't really necessarily upset at them for stealing, and you know, after you talk to them, you have the choice of helping them. You can, you know, give them food, give them some money, um, or you know, maybe just say, "Hey, good luck, on your way." Yeah, and then this is something we also wanted to do a lot. Like, so here we're doing an event, we do it in quests as well, but we want to do, we want to give a lot of this agency into players' hands so that they can sort of shape Eivor a little bit. Um, uh, who she is, so it represents them a little bit more, and they can roleplay that a little bit uh, better. And again, it just gives her like a little bit more humanity in these in these moments. Provide for small walkers.
here, large walker. A necklace? Yes, it's a St. Martin seal. You're welcome here anytime, large walker. You're one of us now. Visit us, okay? I will. Take care now, small green walkers. So, I think AC veterans might recognize this here, but uh, what exactly is Eivor chasing down? Yeah, so here you're seeing Eivor um, running down one of our tattoo uh, images. So this is challenging the player on free run abilities, but also for fans of the series, sort of pulling at their heartstrings for some beloved features. <laughs> so are we going to be able to tattoo Eivor? Yes, by collecting these tattoos, you actually bring them to, back to your settlement, and then you can customize different body parts, having different tattoos everywhere. So again, another form of expression, and it's sort of to represent that, bulk, that Viking culture. Fizz, one of my favorite things when I was just out there exploring East Anglia was coming upon a house or a building and realizing that there was a chest inside, but that there was no easy way in. And in this case, I saw all the doors were barred, but I knew that because there was a chest in there, there must have been some way to get inside. Uh, so I went around the back and, you know, found a way in. Yeah, I'm glad you actually caught on to that. You're pointing at something that we wanted to work on a lot on Valhalla, where we wanted the exploration to make you feel smarter. So we, we played a lot with puzzle solving, so making sure that every house that you find sort of appeals to you like it draws your attention and then when you want to come and explore it's not it's not given to you you still have to work for a little bit so it'll challenge you on your observation skills um logic just trying to find how do i get into this so we play a lot with uh level design quest design to offer challenges to players and you basically come out of it like with a better feeling for the exploration but you also get to see more of a story behind any of these locations which we've crafted so it, it gave us a little bit more time to sort of slow down the experience and and tell a different version of a story a poor victim of someone's fury yeah i mean speaking about exploration and just finding things out in the world i was just wandering and came across this clearing and found this kind of morbid altar yeah so this is this is one of our bigger events that we we have um scattered in the world so as avor explores um she can find um altars like this and by interacting with them here it's a trap that's been set um for by by this character named regan um now there's a bigger story behind all this. It, it, there's multiple steps to it later on. Um, so this this is one of the moments. Uh, it, it, it permits us to go into a slightly more mystical realm and play with a boss fight that has more magical abilities, if we will, and and basically have this awesome boss fight in the middle of the swamps. And so here the abilities that you see uh, Reagan using like are a little bit on the mystical side of things. What's happening is Eivor at the beginning of that trap is poisoned. And so she starts sort of hallucinating, seeing the world in a sort of different uh, light and filter. Um, and so that, that's sort of what lets us go into this, this the, the realm of the weird. my rage. Spirit of my father's rage, fill me! So we just saw here that Regan belongs to something called the Daughters of Lyria. Yeah, that's correct. By finding the other daughters, you'll get a little bit more backstory on who they are, so we don't want to spoil that too much. But it creates like a, a sort of greater story that is not on the main path in any way, but it, it's still very rich and adds to the lore of this world and actually plays into history. So we just had a really exciting, really intense boss battle. I think it's time for something a little bit more relaxing and calming now. Yeah, it's all, here it's all about pacing yourself with the highs and the lows. So here we have a low chill moment of what we call building a cairn. 
So Eivor, as she explores the world, will find these sort of meditative areas where you have a, a pile of rocks that you could just stack on one and, uh, on top of another using physics. And I mean, yeah, the, the ultimate goal is to try and get the highest pile of rocks. But really, it's about taking in the sights, um, relaxing, taking a step back and, and build, just building something. Together, we stack stones into cairns. These? Yes. Think of this as a test of mind and wit. Stack the cairn stones high and wide into any shape you like. I mean, you can spend as much time as you want building these things, making them as high as you want, as weird as you want. I I'm sure, like, a lot of these stuff will end up on the internet, like people comparing structures. And the cool thing is that once you've built it and you decide to get out of it, it sort of stays there. And so that's yours, right? And until the moment where you come back and you want to build a new one, it's, it's sort of cool that we were able to to give that to players to express themselves. At this point in the demo, we've explored East Anglia, we've met some children, we've broken into a house, we fought a boss, we built a Karen. I think now it's finally time to go and head off to Oswald's wedding. Yeah, so this is the, this is the moment it's all been building up to. Um, by the moment you get into the territory, sort of like mentioned by Oswald that he's trying to uh, get married with his Dane lady. And so as you go through the arc, um, that's sort of like the underlying thread. Really, it's about Ruid creating turmoil in the uh, territory and helping Oswald sort of um, get above that and, and show that he's a good leader. And so you finally, after going through all of that arc, uh, finally get these two together, go through their their, we their wedding, and you're invited to attend the ceremony. Um, and then all the uh, activities and fun times that comes afterwards. Yeah, as much as we've seen the brutal side of England, we it's nice to see you know the joyous side of it as well. Yeah, and it's something we really wanted to, to play on in, in Valhalla, where being a Viking is not only about being a raider or a warrior. I mean, there's revelry, there's feasting, there's partying that goes, and like if, if someone knows how to party, it's a Viking. And so here, this is one of our opportunities to sort of show that, to show what a, a sort of Viking gathering is. And what's cool here is it's a, it's a good alliance of Norse culture with Saxon culture, sort of smashing those two things together um, and building bridges. Yeah, I mean, what's a wedding without some drunk archery, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, anything can happen in a in a Viking event, right? Eivor, yeah, here, here, just get drunk, some sh shoot some arrows. Ah, uh, barely a challenge. Steady all, and ready yourself for the wedding race. The king and his bride against all. My king. He. <laughs> So here we see the decision I made to spare Ruid came back to bite us. Yep, that, that's the decision you made uh, coming back. Um, so uh, as we said before, all of your decisions have consequences and this is a big one. I challenge you. I accept. You're basically presented with the option to sort of step in for Oswald, Oswald fight the fight for him, or let him go and fight his I own fight. fight yeah, you know, personally, I chose to fight myself because I, I thought Eivor is the type of person who likes to finish what she started. Plank by plank, and a dead king cannot keep his oaths. Let me finish this. Oswald, you gutless Arya swine! I'll slay the wolf kissed, then hang you with your own tongue. How does this encounter with Ruid differ from our previous fight with him? Uh, so at this point, you've eliminated his wolf, so it's just him. And so he he's angry at this point, and so he will start using his his big gun abilities like fairly earlier on in the fight. Um, so it's way more vicious, way faster. Um, there's less strategy. He goes literally swords blazing at you. Um, and so th this is a fight to the death. And of 
course, here, like, this is a decision you made to go and fight him, but there's multiple outcomes to this scenario. You could have let uh, Oswald fight his own fight um, and prove basically his station as, as the rightful leader. Um, if you had eliminated Ruid, obviously this would not have happened. It would have been a slightly more joyous occasion. Um, but ultimately, in all scenarios, you still have an alliance with Oswald. He's proven to be um, the right leader for this territory um, and to be a good ally for you. I promised you an alliance, and now you have it. And one day I will need you to make good on that alliance. So we're about to take off from the wedding, but Eivor decides it's a good idea to check up on her friend Finner. Yeah, so Finner, Finner is probably one of the more recurring characters in, in this arc. You get to meet him very on. He's a very endearing character, um, sort of used to have a Viking life, sort of misses it, and going through all these adventures together is sort of like... A, lights that fire back and so he's he's willing to join you in your raiders um so he's one of many raiders that you'll you'll encounter in the game and you can sort of recruit bring back home and then have them sort of join you on your adventures on the on long ship he can tell you these stories that we're telling you about you get a little bit to know a little bit more about him um so again it's a fun way to sort of discover more about these characters that you meet and bring him along for adventures together together I'll gather my things. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our Assassin's Creed Valhalla playthrough. Fizz, thank you so much for joining us. When and where can people play it? Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be out on Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 and is coming to Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PC, and Stadia on November 17th. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, available November 17th.